The next section that we're going to look at is technology and its impact on globalisation. What you should do is make this a new heading in your book and be writing summary notes as you go. Increases in technology over the years have played a major role in increasing globalisation. The main changes that have occurred that have influenced globalisation are changes in transport technology and changes in ICT, which is commonly um, the words used for information communication technology. first technology change we're going to have a look at is in the field of transport. Advances in transport have encouraged rapid growth in world travel and trade. So the main changes which have affected globalisation in terms of transport are faster air transport. Now, um, once upon a time, people didn't really travel very much, and I bet that most of you have been on a plane by now and have travelled overseas, whereas when I was growing up, um, air travel wasn't very common at all um, due to the cost and also um, due to there being not as many airlines as what there are now. So faster air transport has actually increased tourism. When people get on a plane, they go somewhere, actually spending money in another country and um, that has um, increased tourism as well. Workforces have been able to become global. So what's happened is that people can... Um, work here in Newcastle and then jump on a plane and be over at the, another office relating to their work um, in no time. Um, workforces also becoming global relates back to transnational corporations, which we talked about last lesson. Products can also be sent over the world quickly. Um, most of you have probably bought things online and had them um, carried to you very quickly, and that's usually via air transport or via um, ship. Before air travel, people would travel by trains and ships and it took much longer. This diagram shows us what we refer to as the shrinking globe. So it doesn't mean that the world is getting smaller, but it means that improvements in transport and technology have um, actually made it easier for us to either get to the other side of the world or to communicate with the other side of the world. As you can see in the 1500s, horse-drawn court coaches and sailing trips, uh, ships travelled 14 kilometres an hour, whereas now we can send internet messages which transfer around the world within a second. So um, just pause for a second and have a look at how these improvements have, in technology have actually um, contributed to the shrinking globe. The second change in technology relating to transport is ocean shipping. Now, I know you mostly think of technology as being electronical things, but actually ocean shipping, there have been major changes which have now um, increased how quickly products can get can travel across the world. So shipping is now more efficient and economical than in the past, and the reason for this is the introduction of super tankers, which we've got a picture of a super tanker there, and we all know about super tankers through... Um, the transport of coal out of the Newcastle Harbour. Um, these tankers also take away bulk cargo such as oil and wheat. The other um, technological advancement in terms of transport is containerisation. So that's good to actually be packed on these containers and we've all seen containers before. But have a look at how many containers they can actually fit on these ships. I think it's actually quite amazing. Um, so this, the Containers are actually packed at factories and then they are transported by either rail or road to the ports and then they are packed onto the ship via cranes. So this really began in 1956 and container sizes were actually standardised in 1961. Second huge change that's occurred in technology is obviously information communication technology. In the past, distance people lived from each other affected how quickly they could pass information to one another. Now due to satellites um, and cables, we are actually connected and we are able to communicate, you know, within seconds with, um, with other people on the other side of the world. Uh, improvements in telecommunications and computerisations have led to this. Technology relating to telecommunications are fibre optic cables and satellites. So the cables were developed in 1970s and they actually carry phone calls and digital information for the internet and cable TV. These cables are under the sea and they're on land in big cities. Um, then you've got satellites which transmit messages via space very quickly and cheaply. 
Uh, satellites are also involved in GPS, which is Global um, Positioning System, and we know we have GPSs in our car, but we also are able to have them on our phones now. Here is a diagram of one company's cables that are actually going under the sea. So I know it's a bit hard to see, but you can um, tell by the positioning of land that um, these cables are actually travelling quite a long way. I had a YouTube clip for you, which I can't show you on this video, but um, the link is at the bottom there if you want to have a look at it. And it actually shows you how these undersea cables are positioned in place. It's quite amazing. So I have two graphs here for you. Let's focus on the one on the left first, and it's relating to global ICT developments between the year 2000 and 2010. So this is a line graph, and you can see by the different coloured lines what each um, section means. What you're looking at across the bottom is the change in time, so between 2000 and 2010, and your other axis is showing you per 100 people who... Um, who are in the world. So you can see what's risen quite dramatically is the top line which is blue and that is mobile. So you can see that between 2000 and 2010 the amount of people um, per 100 in the world who had mobiles has risen from just over 10 up to 76. So it's saying every set, out of every 100 people in the world 76 of them have a mobile. Um, the next line is internet. So uh, every 100 people in the world, 30 people have access to internet, and that's just um, increasing as time goes on. If you have a look at the other bar graph down on the right-hand side, this is mobile phones per 100 people, but it's just in the lesser developed countries. So this is just to show you that the number of mobile phones has actually increased from 2002, where probably only one person in every 100 in less developed countries had a phone whereas um, in 2010 it's more you know around 33 every every hundred people 33 had phones so um, phones are actually quite popular now um, it would be interesting to see what the 2014 statistics are so computerization is the other technology which has occurred in terms of ICT which has changed the way that we are communicating around the world. So computerization enables the storage, retrieval and movement of information. If you have a look, there's a link there um, and even if you type into Google PC Mag History of the Computer and just have a scroll through and see how the computer has changed. Um, in the many years that it's been around. Obviously now the internet allows information to be accessed and shared quickly and businesses are able to become more global because they can now communicate, trade and advertise via the computer. Here's a little timeline of what's been happening on the, um, with regards to the internet over the years. So just pause and have a look at how things have changed. Um, since 1969 and when the internet actually came out during the late 1980s. Um, there's a term called the digital divide and it's important that you write some notes on this and that you also enter this into your glossary term. The digital divide relates to the gap between people who've got access to technology and the people who don't have access to technology. So we know that computers and the internet give people improved education and then Improved education leads to higher wages. So the people living in countries with limited access to computers and the internet are therefore disadvantaged, and this is the digital divide. So the divide can occur within countries and might refer to just inequalities between individuals, households, businesses, or areas. But the divide between countries or regions of the world is called the global digital divide. So you might not think about this, but there are also people in Australia who are disadvantaged in terms of their technology and access to the internet and mobile communication. So this mostly occurs in rural areas, but also um, in people who um, are from poorer communities. This table shows you the difference between internet users in the developed world and in the developing world. So if you look at the blue line graph first um, and you look at the 2014 estimate, it's actually showing you that 77 out of 100 people are users of the internet in the developed or richer countries, whereas in the developing world um, you only have 31% of people who are using the internet. But that's changed quite remarkably um, from 1997. So just pause for a minute, have a look at the graph and um, 
and see the huge differences between the developed and developing countries. These tables give you a little bit more information about worldwide internet users. So you have a look at the first table on the left. It's showing you the difference between um, people using the internet in 2005, 2010 and 2013. So if you go down to the bottom two uh, lines, it's showing you users in the developing world. So that's poorer countries has risen from 8% up to 31%. So that's quite a big jump. And users in the developed world is um, increased from 51% in 2005 up until 77% in 2013. Um, the table down on the right hand side is looking at different regions. So if we're looking at a developing country like Africa, in 2005 only 2% of the population had um, access to the internet and that climbed to 20, um, in 2013 to 16%. Whereas if you have a look at America, 36% were using the internet in 20. Um, in 2005 and that increased up to 61% in 2013. Just as you finish up today, I want you to have a think about how your life would be different without computers and the internet. I want you to make a list in your book of all the activities you couldn't do if we didn't have um, access to all of this technology today. The other thing I want you to do is talk to your parents about how their lives have changed with improvements in technology and transport, because changes have actually been uh, really quite dramatic over the past 20 to 30 years. So ask them, did they travel when they were a child and how changes in technology have affected their jobs.